Ayan. So, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong pakikiisa sa pangalawang bahagi ng webinar series na ito na Online Research Results Dissemination and Learning Event mula sa proyekto na pinamagatang Surveillance and Detection of Microbe Utilizing Molecular Techniques and Associative Trips Vector on Onion, Garlic, and Mango in Luzon. Ang nasabing proyekto ay pinondohan ng Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, na pinangunahan ng Tagayan State University at National Crop Protection Center, UPLB, sa pakikipagtulungan ng Benguet State University at De La Salle University. Ako po si Norman D. Barbecho, isang mananalitsik sa National Crop Protection Center at ang inyong magiging MC sa umagang ito. So bago po tayo formal na magsimula, tayo po ay manalangin upang humingi ng gabay at magpasalamat at ito naman po ay susunda ng pag-awit ng pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Father, may everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your saving help. Let our work always find its origin in you and through you reach completion. Lord, pour out on us the spirit of understanding, truth, and peace. Help us to strive with all our hearts to know what is pleasing to you. And when we know your will, make us determined to do it. God, our Father, work is your gift to us, a call to reach new heights by using our talents for the good of all. Guide us as we work and teach us to live in the spirit that has made us your sons and daughters, in the love that has made us brothers and sisters. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Unang bahagi ng ating webinar series kahapon, ang ating naging paksa ay patungkol sa thrips o pulisip-sip na umaatake sa Carabao Mingo. Gayun din ating kinalakay ang mga sakit ng pananin na ito, mga estratehiya upang masupil ang pulisip-sip sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng mga or organismo <clears throat> na natural na kaawin nito at mga mauhusay na pamamaraan ng pagsasaka o sa pagsasaka ng Carabao Mingo. Sa araw na ito, ang mga nasabing paksa ay ating muling tatalakayin, ngunit patungkol naman sa pagsasaka ng sibuyas. Tayo po ay napapanood live sa Zoom, maging sa Facebook page at YouTube channel ng NCTC. So nais lamang po namin paalalahanan ng mga kasama natin sa Zoom na in-mute ang inyong microphone. Para sa inyong mga katanungan, maaaring niyo po itong idulog sa pamamagitan ng Q&A tab 
sa Zoom o sa comment section ng Facebook at YouTube. So bilang panimula, atin pong patunggan. So bilang panimula, atin pong patunggan ang pagbati at pambungad na mensahe sa atin ni Dr. Urduha G. Alvarado, CSO2, ang kasalukuyang presidente ng Cagayan State University. Ma'am, uh, the Zoom space is yours na to. DA Bar Director Janelle Soriano, Project Leader Janelle Guzman, NCPC UPLB Director Barbara Kawili, to our hardworking presenters, always in search for new knowledge, our able and intelligent reactors, good morning. Agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Without our farmers, we won't be able to put healthy and fresh products on the table. We recognize the bounty of agricultural products here in Cagayan. We are, after all, are known as a largely agricultural province. Our greatest salute goes to our farmers who toil our lands. You are our everyday heroes. However, there can be so many obstacles that come with farming. Other than weather and soil quality among factors to consider in order to have an abundant harvest season, we also have insects to worry about. One of these are the trips, which commonly invade crops such as mangoes, onions, and garlic. Trips have been a long-standing enemy of our farmers. The infestation of this in our farmlands can cause low production and deliver a low quality yield. That is why we are happy in CSU to partner with the National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and in collaboration with Benguet State University and De La Salle University in this online research and results dissemination and learning event. We are lucky to have our research experts in the field. The best way to control trips is to get to know them, what they thrive in, how they live, and when they are most prominent. We really should get to know more about these friends who are more of fiends, so we can get rid of them. It also pays to know the potent diseases and the good agricultural practices that are backed by science. This brings so much essence to have you participate in this three-day research dissemination activity. We are happy to cascade this knowledge to those who are on the ground, those who are prone to experience them in their crops. I am giving you my warmest welcome wherever you are today. We hope you would learn a lot from the lectures and practice it in your farms. Welcome everyone and may everyone have an insightful day ahead. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Alvarado, lalong-lalo na sa critical na papel na iyong ginampanan upang maging matagumpay ang proyektong ito. Atin din pong pakinggan ang mensahe para sa atin ni Dr. Joel H. Lales, ang Assistant Director ng DA Bar. Go Cagayan State University, President Dr. Duha Alvarado, National Crop Protection Center, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Director Dr. Barbara Pawili, CSU Project Leaders Dr. Jonel Guzman, Dr. Cecilia Reyes, Benguet State University, De La Salle State University, NCPC UPLB, and CSU STEAM professors and staff, our colleagues from the department, and the behavior of agricultural research bar and to all the panel reactors and guests being here today blessed morning to all it's with great pleasure to be part of this learning event as we discuss the research results on surveillance and detection of microbe utilizing molecular techniques associated trips vector of onion garlic and mango in ozone over the years, we 
encountered challenges in relation to pests and diseases. And now, we have been experiencing attacks of drips resulting in resistance, resurgence, and high levels of chemical residue in fresh produce, compromising the livelihood of local farmers. It takes great minds to find solutions that require research, trial and error, experiments, most importantly, patience, commitment, and dedication from our experts. Today, let me commend the researchers and professors from various universities who render their time and effort to develop research for development technologies for the benefit of our farmers and fisher folk. We at the PA Bar believe that these are for the initiatives to lead to better pest control and management. We give out support to our partner institutions because we know that these technologies would protect our beneficiaries' livelihood and opportunities. From the discussion that we will be having today, I hope that we will be able to share and communicate these results to our stakeholders in the language they know how. We shall coordinate and integrate these results and turn it into materials that may be of use in their farming practices and strategies. As we adapt to the new normal, I hope we continue to find problems in the agriculture and fishery sector by consulting our beneficiaries. We shall work hand in hand to address their needs as we would also want them to achieve Masaganang ani at mataas na kita. On behalf of the DBAR Director, Dr. Junel P. Soriano, we would like to thank all of you once again for your continuous service, commitment, and support for being present here today. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Lales, for Nagbigay din po ng mensahe para sa atin si Dr. Janelle B. Soriano, ang kasalukuyang direktor ng DA Bar. Isang masaganang araw po sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalo na po sa ating mga magsasakat, mangingisdang, walang humpay sa pagtatrabaho upang masigurong bawat pamilyang Pilipino ay mayroong nakainin sa araw-araw. First of all, let me applaud the Cagayan State University led by the President Orduha Alvarado for hosting this. Likewise, we also applaud their partners, namely National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Benguet State University and De La Salle University. This event, the online research results dissemination and learning event, is connected to the DA Bar funded project, Surveillance and Detection of Microbe Utilizing Molecular Techniques and Associated Trips Vector on Onion, Garlic, and Mango in the soil. In this three-day event, the participants will be able to pick up new knowledge and techniques from the project, apply on their own, and eventually improve their farm productivity and their quality of life. This is just one of the many DA Bar funded projects as the government mandated arm in research for development, rest assured that we through our partner implementing agencies are always on the lookout for newer agricultural technologies and techniques with the aim of fostering them for the benefit of our agri-fishery stakeholders. In other words, you push and inspire us to work even harder to the very extent of our capabilities so we can continue to help and support our farmers and fisher folks. In closing, I want to send my heartfelt gratitude to our partners in the academic sector for their unwavering commitment and support to our farmers and fisher folks. 
Maraming salamat at mabuhay ang ating mga magsasakat manilisdang Pilipino. Maraming salamat po muli, Dr. Lales at Dr. Soriano. Through your leadership, ang suporta ng DA Bar ang naging susi sa katuparan ng proyektong ito. So, isa po sa mga naging milestones ng proyektong ito ay ang pagkakaroon ng website patungkol sa trips of the Philippines. Upang bigyan tayo ng buod ng website na ito, tayo po ay makinig kay Dr. Junel D. Guzman, ang leader ng initiative na ito. A bountiful morning to everyone. In line with our activity, online research results, dissemination, and online learning event, we would also like to launch our website, The Trips of the Philippines. The website is dedicated to educate our farmers, researchers in the government and academe, and faculty and students in the field of agriculture and related sciences on trips its morphology, detection, and control or management. First of all, what are TRIPS and why do we need to study them? TRIPS or Polysipsip are very minute insects with body size ranging from 0.5 to 15 millimeter with color varying from pale yellow, light brown to dark brown, black or bright colored. These insects are invasive in nature and feed on plants, some on fungi, mosses, and a few are known as predators of other insects and mice. They cause damage directly through feeding and oviposition on leaves, buds, flowers, and fruits, or indirectly through transmission of viral, bacterial, or fungal pathogens. They reproduce sexually or asexually, hence producing several generations on their host crops annually. Our website contains a pool of information on these insect pests that were collected through the study. This information were processed and presented in the form of lectures, manuals, multimedia references, and scientific articles. We currently have 14 learning materials, 10 published scientific articles, two utility model publications, and multimedia references on the different studies conducted for the project deposited in the website. The website was made possible by the shared expertise of our team of consultants from our collaborating agencies the National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, De La Salle University, and Benguet State University, which was led by Dr. Cecilia P. Reyes, an internationally renowned TRIPS specialist and taxonomist. A special thanks to the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research for funding support to undertake the research thus making this website possible. You can visit our website anytime through the URL fieldtrips.wordpress.com. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Guzman. So ang website po na ito ay isang napakalaking tulong sa mga nananaliksik sa kulisipsip sa bansa. So, nakakatuwa po na ito ay nagawa na sa taxon o grupo na ito. Sa puntong pong ito, kayo po ay aming iniimbitahan na panandali ang buksa ng inyong kamera para sa photo opportunity. Tayo po ay gagabayan ng ating kasama na si Ms. Mary Joy Mendoza. So, ating pong ipakita ang pinakamatamis na ating Good morning po sa ating lahat. Uh, we have two panels po. Okay. Ano tingin po tayong nakangiti? One, two, three, smile. Second panel. One, two, three, smile. Okay na po. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Ms. Uh, Ms. Joy. So bago po tayo magsimula sa ating mga paksa, atin po munang panoorin ang inihandang awitin ng ating mga kasama mula sa Cagayan State University 
ukol sa kulisipsip sa salin. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Ngayon po ay magtutungo na tayo sa ating mga paksa. Ang una, na, ang una nating paksa ay ukol sa kulisipsip na umaatake sa sibuyas. Ito po ay tatalakayin ni Dr. Cecilia P. Reyes, isang profesor sa Cagayan State University. Si Dr. Reyes po ay ang kinikilalang dalubhasa ng kulisipsip, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi maging sa ibang bansa. Siya po ay nakatanggap na ng maraming parangal at ilan sa mga ito ay ang NSTW Outstanding Research and Development, Development Award in Agriculture mula sa DOST, ang highly exclusive na Outstanding Young Scientist mula sa National Academy of Science and Technology, at kamakailan lamang ay ang 2021 Cohort of Women Leader in Agriculture, Science and Education by the SoutheastAsiaWomen.org, 2022 Ten Flowers of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math by DOST STII, Philippine Journal of Science, at 2022 Tatak University of the Philippines Tasbanyos Alumnus mula sa UPLB Alumni Relations Office. Dr. Reyes, the Zoom space is yours na po. My topic is strips or polysipsip on onion. Onion is considered as one of the most viable agricultural products or it is an indispensable culinary ingredient of main dishes worldwide. In the Philippines, Central Luzon is the top producer of conventionally grown red creole onion and yellow granix onion in the Philippines. And the cropping pattern is rice onion in Nueva Ecija. The red creole onion and shallot, also known as native red onion, are grown organically and the cropping pattern is root crop onion in Batanes. Like garlic, yield and quality of onion are affected by insect pests such as strips, small, pale yellow, brown, black, or bicolored insects that may carry and transmit disease causing bacteria fungi, and virus. If not managed well, these insects cause significant yield loss to onion production alone or in combination of microbial diseases. Trips aggregate and with their piercing sucking mouth parts, feed mainly with the sheets of newly emerging onion leaves resulting to whitish 
blotches that may appear as silvery streaking on leaves. Therefore, an accurate identification of drips is essential to make use of available scientific and technological information in developing pest management strategies. Our study aimed to identify species of drips infesting onion in selected farms in Batanes and Nueva Ecija. Specifically, the study aimed to identify species of drips infesting organically grown red creole onion and shallot or native red onion in Ibana, Mahatao, and Anora Itbayat, and identify species of drips infesting conventionally grown red creole onion and yellow granix onion in selected farms in San Jose City and Bungabon, Nueva Ecija. Uh, this is our study site in Batanes and our study site in Nueva Ecija. Uh, trips were collected from 30 randomly selected onion plants in each onion farm using the shaking or tapping method and destructive sampling. Trips were sorted under the microscope and preserved in 70% ethanol. And the book, Tysanoptera of the Philippine Islands and online resources were used for trips identification. Data collected were analyzed using descriptive statistics. The trips are organic grown real onion in Batanis, in Evena Batanis. Um, the damage of trips were whitish blotches that appeared as silvery streaking on onion leaves. 100% of trips were trips tabasai, an invasive insect pest of Mediterranean or European origin, known as pest of onion, garlic, and many other crops. Abroad, trips tabasai is a confirmed vector of garlic common latent virus, iris yellow spot virus, tomato spotted wilt virus of onion, garlic, tomato, potato, and other crops, and tomato yellow fruiting virus of tomato. Both the female trips and, and second and star larvae were collected from the samples. On shallot and native bread onion in Mahatao Ivana and Anora Itbayat, as in the red creole onion, the damage of trips were also whitish blotches that appeared as silvery streaking on shallot or native red onion leaves. Extensive trips feeding resulted in plant stunting and reduced bulb weight and also predisposes plants to diseases. Uh, both adult and second end star larvae of trips tabasai were collected from samples. In Weba Isiha, a big onion farms in San Jose and Bungabon were also visited um, in 2019 and 2020, but there were no trips collected on onion plants. And the survey was halted due to COVID-19. Onion farms in Nueva Ecija were sprayed with insecticides almost every week to protect plants from heavy infestation of onion army worms. Our conclusion, Trips Tabasai Lindiman is a major pest of red creole onion and shallot or commonly known as native red onion in Batanis. Our recommendations, trips in onion and shallot farm should be monitored regularly, especially during dry season when temperature is high or an increase in temperature tends to accelerate insect consumption, development, and movement, which can affect population dynamics by influencing fecundity, survival, generation time, and population size. Second, use commercially available blue and yellow sticky traps to monitor and manage trips. 
third, use biodegradable natural insecticides to maintain biological balance between natural enemies and insect pests in the farm. And the last, use dispersal emergence trap baited with commercially available chemical attractants such as aggregation pheromone and plant pheromone. You would like to acknowledge our funding agency, the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Reyes. Ang susunod po nating tatalakayin ay ang mga sakit ng sibuyas. Ito po ay ituturo sa atin ni Dr. Aurora F. Pinyon na isang profesor sa Benguet State University. <clears throat> si Dr. Pinyon ay nagtapos ng Bachelor of Science in Agriculture mula sa Central Luzon State University, Master of Science in Agriculture mula sa Benguet State University, at Doctor of Philosophy mula sa University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Si Dr. Pinyon ay nakatanggap ng maraming scholarships gaya ng prestigyosong Fulbright Philippine Agriculture Scholarship Program for Advanced Research. Bilang pagkilala sa kanyang expertise, siya po ay natap na as technical consultant ng ilang pribadong kumpanya. So sa mga nangangarap po o nagnanais na makatanggap ng Fulbright Scholarship, kailangan niyo pong patunayan ng inyong sarili kay Dr. Pinyon sapagat siya po ay isa sa mga panelists ng screening committee. So, Dr. Pinyon, the Zoom space is yours na po. Management of onion fungal diseases. I am Aurora Perer Pinyon. I am one of the study leader uh, during the conduct of this DA bar funded project and now in as much that I have retired already from the government service at Benguet State University, I am already uh, acting as a consultant in the project. Onion is one of the high value and profitable crops in the Philippines. And it is usually planted after rice during the dry season. However, this crop is very susceptible to anthracnose twister infection and other fungal diseases, which lowers the net income of our farmers. Onion is highly susceptible to several viral, fungal, and bacterial diseases. Viral pathogens are infectious particles that contain either DNA or RNA in their structure, while fungal pathogens are those microbes that are eukaryotic, spore-forming with branch filamentous vegetative structure that we call as mycelium. While bacterial pathogens are prokaryotic microorganisms that reproduce rapidly upon entering the tissues and release toxins that can damage and eventually cause premature death. Majority of plant diseases of economic crops like onion is caused by fungal pathogens. Management of diseases in onion is important to increase yield and obtain maximum revenue for the farmers and growers. This information will serve as a guide for our clientele on proper management of onion diseases. Diagnose diseases of onion plants in Luzon. The first disease that we have observed is anthracnose or twister disease. Of onion. The symptoms are observed as affected leaves have sunken necrotic spots with clusters of onion orange to black masses of conidia arranged in subcircular form. Leaves were twisted and curled with dieback symptoms. Buds of affected plants were generally slender with elongated necks, roots were short and sparse which led to collapse of the plants. We could observe from the left side of the plate the pictures, the ones that we have taken from Matanes and the other one was uh, sourced from uh, Dr. Kayabian. So both of the onion plants were showing the anthracnose or twister disease. Management of the disease. Proper cultural practices can be applied, like 
wide spacing, proper drainage, crop rotation, removal of infected plants once it is observed. We could apply fungicide like Mancoseb, Taptan, and Benomil. We could observe at the left side of the plate, letter A is the pure culture of our Coletotricum pathogen, while letter B is showing the conidia of our pathogen. Basal rot of onion. The symptoms of basal rot, the onion is observed to show pronounced rotting of the basal portion of the affected bulb. As shown in the left side of the plate, which was sourced from Bongabong, Nueva Ecija. Management of the disease. Plant clean seeds. Crop rotation. We should not plant alliums, while we should plant tomato, corn, and even sunflower. We can also use disease free planting areas. We can also practice deep seedlings in fungicides prior to transplanting. Fungicides like Mancoseb, Atain M80, Abchem Mancoseb 80, Micron 80 WO, and Banseb are some examples of fungicides that can be used against basal rot of onion. The left side of the plate, letter A, is a pure culture of our fusarium, the causal agent of basal rot of onion, while letter B is the conidia of the said pathogen. Pink root rot disease of onion. Symptoms, we have a background symptoms. We have small and stunted plant are very much visible, below ground symptoms. Visible pink color of the root system is very much observed. Severe cases, roots may die. It may also lead to reduced bulb size. The left side of the plate, we could observe, we were able to observe onion plants in Bongabong Nueva Ecija showing the pink root rot disease. Management of pink root rot disease. We can apply or use resistant varieties if there is any available. We could avoid planting onions in the same field approximately five years. We can also use crop rotation with non-cereal crops is recommended. The left side of the plate shows letter A is the pure culture of Parma SP, the causal agent of pink root rot disease of onion, while letter B shows the conidia of the causal pathogen. We have onion yellow dwarf disease, which is OYDV. We could observe onion plant to show pronounced shallowing of the lip tips. As shown in the left side of the plate, mottling on some parts of the leaves, Distortion of the leaves, leaf curling, root system is not fully developed. Those symptoms are very much visible on the left side of the plate that is sourced from Itbayat Batanes. We have unidentified bacterial disease, the symptoms, yellowing and curling of leaves during the vegetative stage, premature death, due to secondary infection, which is suspected to be bacterial in nature, distinct foul smell of the area, rotting of roots, bulbs, and stem, drying of the plant tissues, and formation of the bulbs. The left side of the plate shows the onion plants in Ibana Batanes with the said unidentified suspected bacterial disease that we have. So in the last photo, we have uh, our farmer cooperator, Manang Linda in Bungabong, uh, myself and Dr. Kayabia. Thank you very much.
Maraming salamat po, Dr. Pinyon. Ang itlong paksa ay patungkol sa pagkilala sa viruses na nagdudulot ng sakit sa sibuyas. Ito po ay ituturo sa ating Dr. Narceo B. Bahet, isang virologist at DOST Picard Balik Scientist na nakabase sa Tarlac Agricultural University at Mariano Marcos State University. Si Dr. Bahet ay may malawak na kaalaman sa plant pathology mula sa kanyang karanasan sa iba't ibang multinational companies at uh, organisasyon gaya halimbawa ng International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, International Rice Research Institute at USDA Agricultural Research Service, just to name a few. Bukod dito, dati nagsilbi si Dr. Bahet bilang profesor sa University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Siya po ay nakatanggap na ng maraming parangal. Siya ay may apda ng maraming scientific articles, laboratory manual at libro. Siya ay nagsisilbing technical advisor at reviewer. At siya ay ilan lamang sa naparangalan ng prestigyosong Biotechnology Career Fellowship Award ng Rockefeller Foundation. So, Dr. Bahet, salamat po sa inyong pagbalik upang maglingkod muli sa ating bansa. The Zoom space is yours na po. Greetings, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good good day. Uh, depending on the time that you guys are, are viewing this uh, simple presentation entitled Recognition of the Virus Diseases Allium Species. I hope that uh, this simple information will uh, enhance our knowledge on the virus diseases of allium uh, species. Allium, in this, in this sense, include garlic, onion, leek, shallot, chives, and others, and the wild species, including the ornamentals. We limit ourselves to onion and garlic because uh, they are the most important crops among this group of allium species that I mentioned ahead. Uh, we can talk of the production aspect that needs to produce them. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to belabor on that one, which is covered by others. I would like to mention only the industrial needs of the garlic and onion. As per FAO in 2000 in the Philippines, the, the industrial manufacturers imported large quantities of processed onion and garlic because of the lack of processors in the country. The demand per month of every manufacturer is around 3.96 metric tons of dried onion, 0.3 metric tons of peeled onion, 0.43 metric tons of dried garlic, and 0.15 metric ton of peeled garlic every month so in essence that there's this opening for you guys that are in garlic and onion uh, industry to look at this the industrial side uh, industrial needs of garlic and onion the uh, coverage uh, of my presentation uh, will uh, be on go by going back to what is a virus what is a disease and then let's move on to the viruses known to infect garlic and onion, how to recognize them, and then how to recognize these virus diseases. And then if we do recognize them, then we can institute management of these diseases. Okay, so what is the virus? A virus is an entity that is highly infectious. They are obligate parasites, meaning they need a live cell for them to multiply. And we talk of composition of viruses. Their composition makes them unique. They are uh, composed of nucleic acid and protein. The nucleic acid is either what we call the deoxyribonucleic acid or ribonucleic acid. In the cells that they infect, they propagate mainly by separate synthesis of components followed by assembly. So the nucleic acid is synthesized or propagated in the cell first or uh, in a separate uh, place in the cell. And the protein component is also synthesized in another component, in uh, another part of the cell. 
And at, at the end, at the end of when these components are synthesized, the, they are assembled in, to come up with a virus particle. There's no other, no, no other pathogenic agent that, that does this system. Uh, bacteria, they multiply separately. Human beings uh, multiply and propagate separately. And the other characteristic of viruses is they are ultra microscopic. They cannot be seen by our naked eye nor the simplest uh, light microscope. Uh, they can only be seen under the electron microscope. What is a disease? So we now shift to plants. You can also talk uh, of human beings. And uh, let's just talk about uh, a plant that is infected by a virus. A plant becomes diseased when it is continuously disturbed by some causal agent. And the infection, the continuous irritation of, of it results to abnormal physiological processes that disrupts the plant's normal structure, growth, function, and other activities. So if you have a virus uh, infecting a plant, there is, uh, there is uh, abnormal there is physiological processes that are affected. And if these uh, physiological processes uh, are affected, then biochemical systems of the plant results to pathological conditions called symptoms. So we see in a plant symptoms of disease. Unlike human beings, uh, uh, patients or infected uh, human beings tell the doctor the symptoms they 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 feel or or whatever. But for plants, it's up to the look or the observer to look for these symptoms. So how do we recognize virus diseases? Uh, again, just like what I mentioned a while ago, uh, the tra a trained eye should uh, uh, look for symptoms. These are the expressions of the this, the pathological conditions. So uh, in unfarmed plantings, we can go uh, and examine individual plants uh, around flowering stage or earlier so that we'll see typical symptoms. From each of the field, we look for plants with virus and virus-like symptoms, take several photo shoots of each plant and the photos are cataloged, properly labeled and stored for uh, uh, downloading, sharing at a different time. Simultaneously, we can do also the growth, meaning, meaning the onion and the garlic bulbs can be planted uh, in a shaded place and then we let them germinate and we see, we look for symptoms on the developing or germinating uh, plants. There are a few groups of viruses that in fact, garlic and onion. In this slide, we see Carla viruses, potiviruses, tospoviruses. So far, there are also unassigned viruses that infect garlic and onion. So the Carla viruses, uh, individual species of viruses are the common latent virus, garlic mosaic virus, and shallow latent virus. The potiviruses are garlic yellow streak virus, onion yellow dwarf, and leek yellow stripe virus. The tospoviruses include the tomato spotted wilt and in patients necrotic spot virus. So garlic viruses A, B, C, and D are still unassigned as of 1995, perhaps with uh, more molecular and bio biological studies conducted on this garlic viruses A, B, and C, and D, uh, they're probably classified in something else. So uh, are they different? Carla viruses and potiviruses look like this under the electron microscope. As I mentioned earlier, we cannot see these viruses under light microscope or our naked eyes. We can only see them under the electron microscope. So here, potiviruses and Carla viruses, they, they are rods. 
uh, the potivirus is thinner and look like spaghetti, a, a, a portion of spaghetti with uh, more fluxus. Carnaviruses is more rigid and shorter. Tospoviruses are spherical with envelope composition. So how do we recognize virus diseases of garlic and onion in the field? So we now go into typical symptoms that we observe and these two crops when they are growing in the field or on grow outs inside the greenhouses and patent plants. In the field, assuming that we have, uh, uh, we have or the farmer is practicing good agricultural practices, virus symptoms if they are there, or if there are, there are plants that are infected, they should be showing symptoms before flowering, uh, like leaf yellowing, as, as shown by this uh, slide on the left. And then you have also a more severe leaf yellowing on tips and edges, as uh, shown on the right uh, photo of this slide. A more uh, distinct or uh, close-up shot of those things are we see here striping along the uh, along the uh, basal portion of the plant, and some leaves may be showing distinct mosaic or striping on the fully expanded leaves, as shown by the right side of this photo. There are other symptoms that we will see or recognize as we go into the field. A yellowish oblong slightly depressed spots on, uh, on leaves and these leaves become necrotic as the season progresses. So see here uh, the uh, slightly yellowish green on the edge becomes necrotic uh, on, on a later part of the growth of the plant. So the, the right side of this uh, slide is showing probably the uh, plant is nearing senescence or about to be harvested. Now, we, we mentioned about the typical symptoms uh, of, of uh, virus infection in the field, but there are those that, or factors, there are factors that may mimic or complicate things. We may be thinking of uh, virus infection, but in fact, they are caused by other factors. For example, so we know how plants look like when they are healthy and if they are colonized or heavily colonized by aphids you'll see this on the right side of the slide because of extreme uh, thrips feeding you'll see these uh, these whitish dots and that may that may fuse into something else just that will look like a typical striping caused by a virus. So here, uh, I, I, in this next slide, we have a, a, a more severe infection. You'll see here on the right side of the slide, you see a severe uh, feeding resulting to the whitening and, and uh, uh, extreme whitening of leaf blades of the, of the plant. There are other factors, other insects may be feeding, for example, that will uh, their their feeding habits causes cause uh, scratches on the leaves or injury, and there are those that other insects that may cause uh, toppling or curling of the the leaves because of leaf miners, moth, and other insects. Of course, uh, just like I mentioned a while ago, if if uh, all uh, good agricultural practices are mentioned, are employed by the farmer, then uh, typical symptoms of virus infection should appear. But then if, for example, nutritional fertilizer application fertilizers uh, are not uh, uh, applied according to the needs of the plant in every locality, then you have also nutritional status mimicking virus disease symptoms. So in essence, uh, uh, we go, we know the symptoms, practical side uh, of it uh, in the field and in uh, gro doing grow outs, simple experiments. And we go now to how do we manage the viruses, virus diseases of garlic and onion. The first principle or, or, or basic uh, funda or fundamental aspect is exclusion. What is this? 
keeping pathogens and vectors out of the cyst-free area. In similar way, you are familiar with the IATF uh, policy on, on, on uh, COVID-19. There are countries that Filipinos who are there in those countries, we keep them outside. We are not allowing them to come in because of the risk of them carrying the virus uh, being, uh, being sources of inoculum for the population that are inside. So they're being excluded. Meaning, meaning the pathogen or the virus is not yet in that particular area of production. Okay. The next one is eradication. So eradication means after the plant is infected, then we go inside and then we do destroy them, pulling them out and, uh, and uh, burning them or something or inactivate the virus that are in that, those plants. Protection. The next uh, strategy is protection. We use barriers, physical or chemical. So it's similar to what the IATF and COVID also again is telling us. For you, for us Filipinos to use it, what are the barriers that we are using? Face masks, face shields, right? So in terms of uh, virus diseases of onion, we can do them too by physical or chemical. We, we spray them with the virus so that, so that the vectors will not feed and introduce by their feeding, introduce the viruses. Therapy or prophylaxis is the next uh, principle. It's incorporation of any chemical into the physiological processes to reverse the progress of disease development. Resistance. So in onion and garlic, do we have uh, resistant varieties? That's a question. If, uh, if there is an active breeding program for garlic and onion, maybe we can develop resistant varieties against them. The next uh, strategy is avoidance. So this in avoidance include modification of planting date, date, date uh, a better way of preparing seedbed and water management. So if we know the, uh, the time when a garlic or onion population planting is infected, then we adjust the planting date so that we will avoid uh, the time when the plant is so susceptible when the uh, pathogens are, are, or the viruses get introduced to them by the migration of these uh, vectors. So, in summary, we define what a virus is. Well, before that, we talk about the industrial importance of garlic and onion. We define what a virus is, a disease. We enumerated the viruses known to infect garlic and onion and likely the other allium species. We, we presented uh, pictures of symptoms of virus diseases of garlic and onion so that those symptoms are the ones that we memorize. Let them stick to our uh, minds so that when we go to the field, then we know what we're looking for and what or what we suspect. And also we talk about uh, what are the other factors that mimic virus disease symptoms, meaning what factors that may complicate our recognition of uh, virus diseases. And then we talk about management of virus diseases. There are strategies, the six strategies that I mentioned, individual things are, are, are actions uh, of uh, control. So my presentation was lifted uh, um, along these references and your uh, they can be they can be uh, downloaded uh, from the web uh, as uh, listed here so uh, maraming salamat po salamat ng marami sa mga sumusunod DA bar for the funding of this project colleagues with the trips project uh, and staff of various agencies, including NCPC, the Tissue Culture Laboratory of UPLB, uh, 
Institute of Craft Sciences, Benguet State University, Mariano Marcos State University, the Office of Provincial Agriculturist of Bataan, the Fiber Industry Development Authority, the DA Santa Barbara Laboratories in Pangasinan, and others. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Bahet. Uh, ang susunod po na paksa ay tungkol naman sa mahusay na pamamaraan sa pagsasaka o good agricultural practices ng sibuyas at bawang. Ang magsasalita po is one of our own, si Dr. Bonifacio F. Kayabyab, mananaliksik at dating direktor ng NCTC. Si Dr. Kayabyab po ay a man of many talents. Siya po ay dalubhasa sa insecticide toxicology, household pest control, biosecurity, botany, plant pathology, biodiversity and pest management, at maging sa development communication. So kami po ay nagagalak na tayo ay sinamahan muli ni Dr. Kayabyab. Sir, the Zoom space is yours na po. Good morning. Uh, my topic uh, will be on good agricultural practices for garlic and corn. I am Bonifacio at Kayabia. So, what is the importance of gut in onion and garlic? First, for producers, products are considered healthy and reliable as they are produced through good agricultural practice. Competitiveness in local and foreign markets increases. For consumers, it ensures food safety and human health since product reliability and quality will increase. For the traders and retailers, they will have more contracts or repeat orders from manufacturers and consumers in lieu of the elimination of health and safety issues. There will be increased consumer confidence in the product that leads to increased demand. And in the environment, concerns of ecological balance and protection of natural resources are eliminated. And then there is sustainable and responsible production uh, that is ensured in the environment. Natural life and biodiversity are preserved. Now let's look at the example of the importance of gut. Sometime in 2012, uh, shallot exports uh, were returned and others were not accepted anymore, particularly in important countries like Indonesia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and others. Why? Because uh, the product were not gut certified. How much uh, was lost? It's around 723 million. So a program on good agricultural practice training in Onion was designed during that time. And we were part of that uh, training program where we acted as resource persons together with people from the Agricultural Training Institute, the Bureau of Agricultural Fisheries, and uh, Agriculture Fisheries Standards, and of course, the Bureau of Land Industry. My uh, topic will center on pest management practices for garlic and onion trees. But before that, let's talk about the different crop protection uh, practices that we will do. First, the farmer should regularly conduct surveillance and monitoring of the pests and diseases, including weeds, of course. There should be visual inspection for the signs, symptoms of the pest and diseases, including the weeds. And then the farmers should employ the proper weed management to maintain sufficient population of natural enemies in refuge or borders. 
pre- and post-emergence control strategies using herbicides may also be done. It is recommended that weeding activities should start one month after transplanting and uh, IPM must be applied to manage the three major problems, insect pests, diseases, and weeds. And uh, there should be a good pest and disease management program to address emerging or new pest and disease problems. Now let's look at IPM. What is IPM? Integrated Pest Management is an effective and environment-friendly approach to pest management to control and minimize pest damage, damages. IPM combines the use of current and comprehensive information on the life cycles of pests, their interaction with the environment, and the available pest control methods such as varietal selection or resistant cultivars, biological, cultural, physical, mechanical, and chemical controls. The use of chemicals should be only on a need basis. To decide whether management or control is needed and to correctly determine the pest management strategy, insect pests and diseases, as mentioned, should be regularly monitored and properly identified. The field and facilities are checked regularly for the presence of pests the population density, and the damages. Again, the methods of managing pests are the use of resistant varieties or planting materials. So even before planting, you have already the choice on uh, what uh, cultivars or seeds are you going to use, which is hopefully they have resistance uh, characters. And then you have mechanical control, the cultural control, the use of biological control agents such as uh, the botanicals, microbials, pheromones, and the macrobials. And then we have chemical control. What you see now are some of the practices and picking, like wrapping, burning on extreme cases since we have a low uh, for not uh, using this kind of uh, practice anymore. Probably in times of emergency, like if we have invasive pests where burning might be an effective tool, we can discuss this with the local government unit or probably during a short period of time of using this kind of strategy. And then for cultural control, there should be sanitation, removing disease parts or burning this or burying this the time of planting since uh, farmers knows very well when the pest comes so they can time their planting schedule they can use net so that uh, the entry of uh, particularly the flying insects can be ward off the correct use of fertilizer must be practiced because Excessive fertilizer is wasteful and makes the plant weak. It becomes vulnerable to pests and diseases. You can use mulch such as hay or plastic material. What you see now are uh, some of the uh, control practices through cultural method. So you can uh, plug to control soil borne insect pests, net, and mulch. As to the use of BCAs or microbial or biological control agents, uh, you can use uh, friendly insects and uh, microbes. What you see now are the coccinella beetles or the predators. Both the immature and the adult can prey on uh, pests such as trees. And then biocontrol agents such as microbes, friendly microbes like virus, and then bacteria, and fungi, and also for the uh, natural enemy, a friendly insect, 
the Ornius Tantilus, which is uh, preying on grief cells. When we use chemical control, we should spray only when necessary or at recommended spray interval. And then we should follow recommended rates for pesticide application. We should observe recommended pre-harvest interval. We should use pesticides only on recommended crops and dispose of empty insecticide bottles and cartons properly. Now let's look at the uh, management of uh, IPM of garlic, onion, thrips, which is thrips, tabasai, linden. So this thrips is a uh, one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter. Its eggs and white person star larvae are difficult to observe using the naked eye. And its life cycle is from 13 to 30 days and dependent on host plant and temperature. They are often found on new or center leaves. Onion and garlic leaves infested with these strips turn yellow then silvery white. So how are we going to monitor for this pest? When you look at the leaves, you will see white or silvery appearance and flecking. And then, uh, you, at the middle, you will see pale yellow second instar larvae or brownish adults on leaf sheets and inner leaves. The third picture, you should look for signs of iris yellow spot virus or IYSB. Observe the following symptoms. Eye spot to diamond shape, yellow, light green or straw colored lesions on the leaf. How are we going to manage these trips? Crop rotation is one uh, aspect that we can use. Deep plowing and intensive irrigation. All of these can help to reduce trips population. Regular sampling should be done during the growing season. Monitor early appearance of trips by visual sampling, shaking leaves on whiteboard and by using blue or yellow sticky traps and soil emergence trap. Provide a natural animal reservoir near your garlic or onion farm by using buffer plants such as some of the host plants that attract predatory mites. Amaranthus spinosus can also be planted, which is a host plant for the predator Corius tantilus that feeds on eggs and larvae of trees. Manage soil by healing up or intermittent flooding where many trips occupate and reach in the field to remove reservoir for more trips and viruses and other pathogens. The use of biopesticide or synthetic insecticide spray should always be on a new basis or if there are 20 to 30 trips per plant. So please see the active ingredients registered at FDA for garlic and onion and then follow the label or mark. Let's look at some of the examples of recommended pesticides by FDA for trips. So we have here Bamectin, Adivard, Romectin, the other brand names, and then hydrochloride. We have Kartak, Yantrak, Kartak, Breezer, and Dolphin. Then we have Chlorpyrifos plus BPMC. You have there the different brands of this uh, product. And then Cypermetrine also comes in different products. So when we buy these products, let's look at the active ingredients and the percentage because sometimes you are buying the same. Uh, Insecticide. It might be also a cypermetrin, like you're buying a bug buster, and then by Simbus, they are one and the same. And then we have Pentoate. Always visit the website of the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority to be updated on the recommended pesticides for various pests 
and traps the data. Now let's look at pesticide management on the choice of crop protection products. Crop protection measures should be appropriate for the control of pests based on the approval of the competent authority like local government to PA technicians, the regional crop protection centers, IPM staff and experts from private sector and the academy. Growers or farmers should use agricultural chemicals that are registered for cultivation of garlic and onion and procured from licensed suppliers that are duly approved by the FDA and in the country where the produce is intended to be treated. The use of such agricultural chemicals must be in accordance with approved labor instructions for the intended purposes. If the choice of chemical product is made by advisors, they should show their proof, uh, they should show their proof of technical competence, like uh, certificates of training, education, experience, and accreditation from competent authorities. We should look at the expiry dates of the chemicals to be procured. And this is usually two years after the formulation date. And you'll see this in the label. The chemicals should be applied at approved dosages to prevent residue levels to exceed the NRL or the maximum residue dosages. If deemed necessary, the produce shall be subjected to residue analysis to be conducted by an accredited laboratory for safety precaution. Now let's look at the application of crop protection products. Number one, the person responsible for application should be technically competent. He should possess the relevant trainings and experiences. The assistance of government or industry technicians must be requested if in doubt of applying a certain pesticide. The IPM principles and techniques should be used whenever possible to minimize the use of pesticides. A rotation strategy for chemical application and other crop protection measures must be employed to avoid the development of pesticide resistance. So use different chemical groupings like organic phosphates, synthetic pyrethroids, carbonates, and others. The workers should use well-maintained protective clothing or attire during application Establish the entry periods or the safe period of time to enter the field or the crops for monitoring or power up spraying. Application of pesticides should be managed appropriately to minimize the risk of spray drip to neighboring properties and environmentally sensitive areas such as uh, homes or communities. Areas supplied with pesticides should be marked with appropriate warning signs for public safety. Now let's look at the safety and welfare of authorized workers during application. Authorized farm workers should be trained on the proper handling location of crop protection products. The material safety data sheets or MSDS or safety instructions from a blue label should be made readily available for reference. First aid facilities, Kits should be readily available to three quarters of minor cuts and bruises and those that have been accidentally contaminated with chemicals prior to medical attention or treatment in a clinic or a hospital. First aid and emergency instructions should be documented and conspicuously displayed strategically. As for safety reminders, don't use products or pests that are not indicated on the label. And don't use more pesticides than directed by the label. Don't think that twice the amount will do twice the job. Use protective measures when handling pesticides as directed by the label, such as wearing impermeable gloves, long pants, and long sleeve shirts, face masks, face shield, and caps. Change clothes and wash your hands immediately after spraying or applying pesticides. Before applying a pesticide, whether indoor or outdoors, move children away from where the pesticide will be applied. 
including their toys and pets. Keep them away until the pesticide is dry or as recommended in the label. Thank you very much. Ayun. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Kayabiyab. Ang ikalima nating paksa ay patungkol naman sa estratehiya upang supilin ang pulisipsip sa pamamagitan ng mga organismo na maaaring pumuksa sa insektong ito. Ito po ay tatalakayin sa atin ni Dr. Divina M. Amalin, profesor sa De La Salle University. Si Dr. Amalin po ay dalubhasa sa Biological Control of Invasive Pest Species, Integrated Pest Management, Insect Vector Control, Insect and Spider Biodiversity, at Biologically Based Technologies for Pest Control. Si Dr. Amalin po ay napaka-prolific na mananaliksik at professor. Siya po sa kasalukuyan ay may akda ng mahigit dalawandaang scientific articles na nasipi na ng mahigit isang libong beses. So, uh, Dr. Amalin, um, the Zoom space is yours na po. Good day, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk about this important insect pest of many agricultural crops and share some potential strategies to manage its, its population using a more bio-based uh, approach. So what is bio-based pest control strategy? Bio-based control strategy is a total symptom approach to pest management as shown in this diagram, which is based on a good understanding of interaction within the ec an ecosystem while using therapeutics as or the use of uh, pesticide as backups. The upside down pyramid to the left reflects the unstable condition under heavy reliance on uh, synthetic chemical pesticide and the upright pyramid to the right reflects sustainable qualities of a total system uh, strategy or a more sustainable uh, pest control strategy. So what is this pest that I'm talking about? Uh, this is uh, the, the, these are the trips uh, under the order Tysonoptera. They are very tiny, a slender insect with fringe uh, wings. And they're primarily plant feeders that this color and the scar leaf uh, flower and, and also the fruit surfaces. And they distort the plant parts and they can even be a vector of uh, diseases uh, <clears throat> of uh, different uh, plants that they are uh, infesting. But uh, there are also trip species that are beneficial predators uh, that feed on other insects and mites. Uh, for example, is the six spotted trips uh, in this slide, no, showing you uh, that they are uh, these trips is uh, the, is feeding on uh, plant mite. But uh, this, the trips are, are, are cosmopolitan in nature, uh, widespread distribution globally, just like this uh, trips tabasai, which uh, is um, uh, this uh, species has a wide host range. They feed on more than uh, 100 species of plants, importantly on tobacco, melon, onion, garlic, uh, mango, to name a few. Um, so what are the ways to control this uh, important uh, trips uh, pest species? Um, uh, showing in this uh, uh, slides, uh, as, as shown in the diagram, many different control measures are being utilized in the control of uh, different species of pest, uh, uh, trips species. Uh, to name a few is that first is the genetic control or the use of resistant varieties, cultivar varieties. Uh, the cultural control involving the uh, biosecurity and uh, the sanitation protocol, behavioral uh, control or the use of pheromone and pheromone to manipulate behavior of the insect, um, biological control or the use of uh, different beneficial organisms, physical control through, the, through uh, providing barriers and other activities that can get rid of this pest, and uh, chemical control or the use of synthetic pesticide. And this is the last resort in the IPM uh, system. Why? Because the chemical control being the last resort uh, is uh, that uh, there are uh, too many of these uh, chemical pesticide has uh, low to moderate toxicity uh, on non-targets. And uh, Metamil, which is uh, being uh, um, uh, recommended for trips, is uh, is a is a carbon made, and this is highly toxic to humans. So uh, that's why chemical control is the last resort in the IPM system of 
trips uh, best species and other uh, and other best species no? um so i will focus on the use of biological control no and in the first let's define what a biological control perspective that we have as shown uh in this slide so there are several species that has potential as biological control of different trips trips pest species as shown in this uh, different uh, as shown in these uh, uh, slides, um, and uh, number uh, number one is the or the first one is this orius species, and uh, uh, several uh, species of thieves are being um, are being uh, attacked by this uh, sp this uh, species of uh, uh, predatory orius. Uh, another uh, a very good candidate is the predatory mites, in particular the Amblyseus species. Uh, also, a, a parasitoid species, uh, the tiny inserted wasp, is a, big, a, a good candidate also as biologic control of trip species. And various species of entomopathogens, such as the fungal agent and these uh, parasitic uh, nematodes but uh, just but just recently uh this a species of penicillium uh, which is another fungal entomopathogen that was discovered infecting the trips hawaiensis and trips tabasa in the philippines and um, this is uh this is uh currently being investigated and so far the bioassay result or biological assay result uh for this um, entomopathogen, fungal entomopathogen, uh, show um, high potential of this fungal entomopathogen as biological control agent of trips in the Philippines. So, with the wide array of natural enemy complex of trips, it is uh, therefore very important to conserve them in the field when present abundantly or augment to increase. Uh, their population. Conservation of the biological control agent should be done by providing the proper habitat and refuge areas to avail of their full potential as natural control agents against strips pest species. So let's get rid of these strips the natural way. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay ang agrikultura sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Amalin. Ngayon naman po, ang huli natin paksa para sa umagang ito ay ang bioassay ng fungi na nagdudulot ng sakit sa mapaminsalang sarihay ng kulisipsip na trips tabasay. Ito po ay tatalakayan sa atin ni Professor Lucille Paraden, na professor sa Benguet State University. Si Professor Paraden ay nagtapos ng kanyang bachelor's degree in agriculture at master's degree in entomology mula sa Benguet State University. Sa kasulukuluyan, siya po ay kumukuha ng Doctor of Philosophy sa Entomology sa University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Si Professor Paradin po ay daluba sa microbes, trips vectors, integrated pest management, at paggamit ng entomopathogenic fungi at nematodes bilang pesticides. So, Prof. Professor Paradin, uh, the Zoom space is yours na po. Good morning. Today I will be sharing the result of our study, Bioassay of Metarisium anisuclei against Trips Tabasai Lindemann. With me in this research are Dr. Cecilia Reyes, Dr. Divina Amalin, Dr. Bonifacio Cayabiab, Dr. Maria Anita Bautista, and Dr. Junel B. De Guzman. Trips Tabasai Lindemann is an invasive insect pest. Currently, it is one of the pest problems of local garlic and onion growers. It transmits viruses such as garlic common latent virus, Irish yellow spot virus on onions, garlic, and potatoes, and yet tomato yellow fruit ring virus and tomato spotted wilt virus on tomatoes. Now, according to Au and Hugh, the main control method against trips is heavy application of insecticides. However, the harmful impacts of these toxic chemical insecticides on the uh, environment and the public concern on chemical residue on food have driven extensive research for alternatives. Thus, the purpose of this research was to test the efficiency of locally isolated entomopathogenic fungi. EPF, 
are currently uh, being uh, explored and investigated for the control of many uh, insect pests. So many biological control agents categorized as EPF have already been commercialized, and which uh, includes Bovaria bashana, Bovaria bronyarti, Metarichum anisupliae, and Isaria fomosorosea. In our research, we isolated and assessed the effectiveness of local strain of entomopathogenic fungus against onions and garlic leaves. This was conducted in La Trinidad Benguet from May 2021 to April 2022. In general, the study aimed to isolate and assess the effectiveness of local strain of fungus against Trips tabasai lindeman. And with that, we identified Trips species infesting uh, garlic in the experimental area of Benguet State University, La Trinidad campus isolated and identified fungus infected trips collected from roses from the rose growing area of La Trinidad. Mass produce the fungal isolate in the laboratory and assess the effectiveness of the fungal isolate against trips under laboratory condition. So this is our uh, study site. So this is the uh, collection and the source of thrips for the study this is owned by mr norbert p santo our farmer cooperator and here also is a thrips infected with the uh, metarichum and here is a bottle of a pure culture of metarichum we uh, grow them grow them in uh, corn grits and this is also how we uh, grow uh, garlic plantlets in the under laboratory condition so this is the uh, setup so one garlic uh, clove is planted in a sterile uh, floral foam okay? and then it is uh, placed inside a clear uh, tube covered with a fine mesh screen so uh, this is me and dr reyes inside the uh, entomology laboratory room so for the uh, methodology for the collection and identification of the uh, trips, they were collected on uh, garlic plants, were sorted and examined under a uh, microscope. For the identification, we used the Thysanoptera of the Philippine Island, authored by Dr. Reyes, and other online resources. For the culture of metarichum, Standard procedure of isolating fungus from trips was followed. Pure culture of local strain of metarichum was mass produced using sterilized corn grits. While for the identification, sample of the pure culture of the isolate was sent to the Philippine Genome Center for DNA sequencing and species identification. And for the bioassay test, uh, different concentrations of metarichum were used and for the positive control commercial insecticide was used with the uh, active ingredient formentanate hydrochloride and ammonium chloride for the negative control we use sterile distilled water so a uh, germinated garlic cloves was washed with uh, sterile distilled water air dried under a confined screen mesh then sprayed with a desired concentration of the metarichum. Live healthy adult female trips were washed three times with cold sterile distilled water, allowed to recover before being introduced in a tube with metarichum treated garlic plantlets. Bioassay test was observed for seven days. As to the uh, analysis of the data, counts of infected dead trips using metarichum concentrations, different concentrations, and counts of dead trips using positive and negative control were analyzed using Minitab statistical tool version 17. Lethal concentration at 50% values were obtained using probit analysis. As to the uh, result for the identification and taxonomic classification of the uh, trips, so uh, morphological identification of trips infesting garlic in La Trinidad was found to be trips tabasai lindiman. 
These are based on their diagnostic characteristics. While for the uh, isolated EPF, morphologically it was identified as metarhythm SP, but was further confirmed with the result of the DNA sequence from the Philippine Genome Center that it is metarhythm anisopia. So here is the result of the bioassay test using metarhythm at different concentrations and positive and negative control using healthy female adult trips. Analysis of variance between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm at concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and mean counts of dead trips under positive control was not significantly different. There was also no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 and mean counts of dead trips using positive control. While there was no significant difference between the mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm at concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, raised to 2, raised to 3, raised to 4, and the mean dead counts of trips using negative control. On the uh, second trial, analysis of variance between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, raised to 7, raised to 8, raised to 9, and mean counts of dead trips using passive CTIV control was not significantly different. There was no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 5 and 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, and 9. There was no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, and 4, and mean counts of dead trips using negative control. On the third trial, analysis of variance between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, nine and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different. No significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 4 and 1 by 10 raised to 5. No significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1 and 1 by 10 raised to 3 and no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, raised to 2, raised to 3, and mean dead counts of trips using negative control. Now, comparing the three trials, analysis of variance between total mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, Nine and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different in all the trials. Also, no significant difference between the total mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 5, 1 by 10 raised to 6, and 1 by 10 raised to 7, and 1 by 10 raised to 8. And no significant difference between the total mean counts of infected dead trips using metarhythm concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative control. So probate analysis show that the lethal concentration of metarhythm anisoplea was 401,707.22 or 4 by 10 to the fifth power, which means that this concentration can kill 50% of trips tabasai population. So the lethal concentration of metarhythm isolate, which was 4 by 10 raised to 5 against trips tabasai in demand, is comparable to the LC50 of metarhythm anisoplea or the MET 11.1, which was 8.1 by 10 to the fifth on Aedes albopictus mosquito, as recently reported by Shokat et al. in China. This implies that the local strain of metarhythm isolated from trips infesting roses in latrina benguet could be used as an integral part of pest management strategies for trips. According to Hugh et al., metarhythm anisoplea is available commercially, but it is a generalist entomopathogenic fungi known to infect many species of insects, where 
the uh, general mode of infection comprised of six stages. So, which is adhesion, germination, formation of the apresorium, penetration, colonization of the hemolymph, and extrusion and sporulation. So, to conclude, the local strain of metarhesium anisopiae is an effective biological control agent of tryptabasae demand. It is then recommended to conduct biological assay of metarhesium anisopiae against tryptabasae under greenhouse condition and conduct biological assay of metarhesium sp against bees as being the most efficient pollinators of flowering crops. This ends my lecture. So uh, I want to acknowledge the management staff of Cagayan State University and Benguet State University for their uh, full support in this research. And also Ms. Maria Catherine M. Kapuyuk and Mr. Carr Jan J. Ayan for their technical assistance. The study is a part of the uh, project funded by the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Professor Paradin. So we were in a treat po, no? Uh, Siksik liglig umaapaw, ika nga yung resume ng ating mga speakers at ang mga kaalaman na kanilang ibinahagi. Uh, isa pong pribileyo ang matuto sa kanila. Sa punto po ito, nag po kami ng ilang individual na kumakatawan sa kanilang mga organisasyon upang magbigay ng kanilang reaksyon sa mga tinalakay ng ating resource speakers. Ang una ko pong inaanyayahan ay si Mr. Armin R. Pamani, ang presidente ng segundo distrito, Onion, Corn, Grains and Cluster Association sa Bayambang, Pangasinan. Ako po si Armin Pamani, presidente ng San Gabriel Second Farmers Association at Director ng Segundo Distrito Cluster Association Bayambang Pangasinan Incorporated. May gift dalawang dekada na ako sa Union Production. Ang osasyo namin ay tinatag noong 2014 Segundo Distrito, dalawang taon pa lang po ito. Ang product namin mga sibuyas ay binibenta sa wet at storage market. Ang pag-aalaga ng sibuyas ay sadyang malaking hamon sa mga magsasaka. Andiyan din yung di mawala-walang peste at sakit sa mga sibuyas. Gaya ng trips, onion flies, army worm na siyang nagpapahirap sa amin. Andiyan din yung mga sakit sa sibuyas tulad ng downy mild dew, parproblacks, antraclos, malbrac, and other polyard diseases. Dito sa amin, May kanya-kanyang pamamaraan ng mga farmers kung paano kontrolin o puksayin ang mga teste at sakit sa sibuyas. Pero ako, mayroon akong sumusunod na sariling programa na siyang ginabahagi ko sa ating mga kapwa magsasaka. Sa test control naman, gumagamit ako ng biological pesticide o kaya botanical pesticide at yung mga synthetic pesticide na nabibili over the market na ngayon. Usually, nagkakanda ka po ng scouting sa kanimang ko ng sibuyas. That's frequently. Nagkakanda ka po. Nang sa ganun, malaman po kung may peste o anong klaseng peste ng sibuyas ang nandun. Nagiliwala kasi ako na ang bawat peste at sakit ay may kanya-kanyang typical na dapat magamit para makontrol ito. Meron naman pagkakataon para maiwasan ko yung tinatawag natin na pag-build up ng resistance ng insekto Gumagamit din ako ng mga cultural approach o tinatawag ko ng indigenous approach. Naghahalo po ako ng pesticidio sa irrigation. Gumagamit kami kasi ng open irrigation sa sibuyas. Hindi kami gumagamit ng drip, drip irrigation. Ay mahal. Lahat po ng ideas na ito ay natutunan ko sa mga seminars, mga ideas and findings ng mga international research community, mga tinatawag kong food security warriors, ang tulong ng DA local namin, DA Bayambang, ang tulong ng DA province namin, ang province ng Pangasinan, ng RCPC ng Region 1. Pero higit sa lahat, ang grupo ng test 
Management Division ng Bureau of Plants and Industry Central sa pamumuno ni Doc Roni. Ang isa pang team na nagbibigay sa akin ng ideas ay ang grupo ni Dr. Bonifacio Tayabiyab kasama ng ating personal na observation at findings dito sa Taniman. Dahil doon, nakagawa ako ng isang simple at maliit na integrated test management on onion production. Iyon, yun ang dinatawag ko na the IP, simple IPM save my day. Ayun, uh, marami salamat po Mr. Pamani. Nais ko rin pong imbatahan si Mr. Judy Tria, ang uh, cluster leader ng Lourdes Multipurpose Cooperative ng Saisay Occidental Mindoro. Mapagpalang araw at masaga ng ani sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Judy Tria ng LMPC ang Lourdes Multipurpose Cooperative na matatagpuan sa bayan ng Magsaysay at bayan ng San Jose, lalawigan ng Occidental Mindoro. Sa kasalukuyan po ay cluster leader din po ako ng samahan ng mga magsasakang nagtatanim ng puting sibuyas. Halos limang taon na po kami ngayon buhat ng itatag namin na aming samahan. At ganun na din po ang tagal ng pagdideliver namin ng puting sibuya sa Jollibee Food Corporation at ang mga produce naming mga puting sibuyas na hindi po masa sa specification binigay ng ating buyer ay binabagsak naman natin sa ating local market sa local buyers at mga traders at ganun din yung mga excess na produce ng ating mga kasamahang magsasaka. At nagkaroon din tayo ng pagkakataon na mag-test market sa isang institutional buyer na may pangalang UBM at mukhang nakapasa naman kaya tinaplano natin na mag-supply ngayong susunod na season ng mas maraming volume. So, masaya po tayong mga magsasaka kami mga nagtatanong ng puting sibuyas ito sa Mindoro dahil may sigurado na po tayong buyer. Uh, kaya nga, masaya-masaya kami at ganadong-ganado na magtanin ng mas maraming uh, sibuyas. Subalit, kasama rin dito yung mga problema na encounter natin sa pagtatanim ng sibuyas. Uh, lalo na kapag nadadaanan tayo ng mga kalamidad uh, tulad ng malawakang pagbaha, malalakas na bagyo at mahabang tagtuyot. Pabilang na din dyan, yung mga pagdating ng mga sakit at mga peste uh, tulad ng bacterial diseases na uh, ang halimbawa ito ay bacterial soprat, necrat, dumping off at doon naman sa mga piste natin ay yung naranasan natin dito na halos dalawang taon na, na pumasok sa ating lalawigan ay yung tawag nating army worms o harabas so malaking epekto po ang nagagawa nito sa ating mga pananim kaya nga <coughs> masaya tayo kapag uh, may mga uh, NGO at mga profesor naman sa akademya na nag-aaral upang matugunan ang ito mga problema. Samantala, kapag nararanasan namin ang mga itong problema, ay agad namin itong binibigyan ng solusyon sa abot ng aming makakaya at pinagbibigay alam namin agad sa ating partner sa LGO, sa kanilang mahusay na mga technician, at sila ang nag-advise sa amin kung paano namin ito procure at kung anong mga chemicals ang dapat namin i-apply. Hanggang dito na lamang po at maraming salamat po sa inyo. 
Maraming salamat po, Mr. Tria. Inimbitahan din po namin si Mr. Severino Baldove na kasapi ng Municipal Agriculture and Fisheries Council sa Basco, Batanes. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Baldove. At uh, lastly, inaanyayahan po natin si Mr. Romulo Ramos, ang presidente ng Pulong Bully Farmers Multipurpose Association mula rin sa Basco, Batanes. Magandang araw po. Ako si Romulo Ramos, presidente ng Barangay Dolores, Santo Domingo, Nebesia. Uh, ako po ay isa sa 95 active members ng Pulong Bully ko PMPC. Uh, ang aming pong co-op ay netayo taong 1991. At ako po naman ay naging membro ang taong 1998. Uh, kami po ay land bank assisted co-op at meron kaming palay crop production line taong 19 ay 2004 nang magbigyan kami ng grid line para sa sibuyas at nagbisa ang sibuyas ng co-op uh, sa pong sibuyas po ay kailangang mayroong uh, kaalaman uh, mahusay na pag-aalaga ang isang mag-aalaga para hindi masalanta ng anumang sakit ang sibuyas uh, tulad ng pangangalaga sa tubig uh, dumping off anthracnose spaghetti treat jets at sa mga iba-ibang klase ng insekto. Taong 2015 na magsimula po ang pag-atake ng Army Worm. Lahat po ng klase ng laso na aming ginamit ay hindi po tumatalab sa Army Worm. Taong 2016 ang aming kopo ay nanghingi ng tulong sa RCPC NCPC at sila naman po ay tumugon sa pagbibigay ng mga technical na pangangalaga sa 
sibuyas at pag, para mapatay ang mga herbivore. Pero hanggang sa taong kasalukuyan ay nandito pa rin ang army worm at kailangan ng para maka survive po ang sibuyas ay kailangan ng halos araw-araw na pag-i-spray ng, ng chemical mauubos ang sibuyas kung hindi ka mag-i-spray palagi itong taon pong 2022 ay may dumating po na isang klase ng chemical na insecticide chemical na pinatest ng Leeds Agri at ito po ay naging isang mabisang pamatay insekto namin aprobado po na mataas ang efficacy at kailangan kahit na hindi ka mag spray sa loob ng sampung araw ay napapatay pa rin ang sibuy ang karabas at yun po na pagligtas sa amin sa aking halaman Maraming salamat po Mr. Ramos uh, Nais lamang po namin i-mention na ang organisasyon po ng Mr. Ramos ay nakabase sa Santo Domingo Nueva Ecija at hindi po sa Basco Batanes So Marami po tayong natutunan mula sa ating mga resource speakers at reactors. So malamang po, eh, uh, mayroon din kayong mga tatanungan na nais ninyong matugunan. So bubuksan po natin ang oras dito para mabigyan ng pagkakataon ng ating resource speakers na sagutin ang inyong mga katanungan. Ito po ay pangungunahan ng ating kasamahan na si Ms. Sarah Jane Manaday na isa ring mananaliksik sa NCPC. Ms. Sarah? Hello. Um, yeah, good morning po. Um, hindi ko po mabuksan yung video ko. Sorry. Um, I need permission po sa host na video. Okay, ayan. So, okay na po. So, Thank you, Mr. Mandy. Once again, I am Sarah Jean Manaday and I will be um, facilitating the open forum this morning. So kahapon po, marami po tayong participants from regions 1, 2, 3, NCR, Davao, and Cotabato. Today, uh, nakita ko mga participants naman natin ay galing pang Misamis, Baybay Leyte, meron din taga Palawan State University from NCR. We also have participants from Negros and Mindanao. So good morning po sa inyong lahat and thank you for joining with us. So um, kung umaten po kayo kahapon itong same virtual learning event, today is just a continuation of the results dissemination. However, the, the focus is on the pest and diseases of onion. And also, kahapon, um, we had an interactive forum with regards to mango trips and diseases. And uh, this time, we are going to learn more about ano naman, onion trips and onion diseases. So the same set of presenters will be joining us in this open forum. And I am inviting Dr. Cecil Reyes who discussed about onion trips, Dr. Aurora Pinon for diseases of onion, Dr. Nasey Bahet for viruses infecting onion. We also have Dr. Bonnie Kayabiab for the good agricultural practices and Dr. Divina Amalin who talked about bio-based uh, pest control for trips. And also we, we have Assistant Professor Lucille Faroden who also shared about their results on the bioassay of metaratium against trips tabasi. And, and also to our panel of reactors who are in the Zoom right now, kung nandito po kayo, welcome din po kayo mag-share ng inyong mga experiences. And of course, I'd like to acknowledge also Dr. Tess Talisay, who has been with us since yesterday's um, open forum. Hi, Ma'am Tess. And uh, actually, si Ma'am Tess po ay isa pl isang plant pathologist and she was also my ad undergraduate advisor. And so, um, okay, I hope marami po tayong natutunan sa mga presentations na ating speakers kanina. And um, if you have clarifications or questions tungkol dun sa mga information na shinare nila, this is the right time. Sa mga viewers po natin sa Facebook and YouTube, maaari pong gamitin ang comment section to type in your questions. And then the technical team behind the scene will be collecting those questions. 
Sa mga nasa Zoom naman po, pwede rin pong gamitin ng comment section. However, we are encouraging uh, live questions. Gamitin lamang po ang raise hand or action button na makikita sa ibaba ng Zoom. And then, hintayin niyo pong matawag ang inyong mga pangalan. At pag natawag po kayo, please open your camera and audio para makilala po namin kayo and ayun, uh, kung tagasan po kayo. Ayan. So, I think we only have more or less 20 minutes, 20-25 minutes allotted for the open forum. So, if you have questions now, um, this is your time. Um, I... Sabihin nyo na po ang inyong mga questions habang meron pa po tayong time. Ayan. So, do I see uh, questions? Do I see? Wait lang, check po natin ang ating gallery. Okay. Medyo nahiya pa ulit. Ayan. So, siguro uh, pangunahan ko na lang din po ulit ang, ang unang tanong. Ayan. So, uh, kahapon po, nabang, uh, this one, uh, I want to ask um, Dr. Reyes po for this question. Uh, Ma'am, Ma'am Cecil? Yes, hello. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kasama ko po ngayon si Ma'am Cecil. So Ma'am, kahapon nabanggit niyo po na ang um, dominant species sa uh, trips ng manga is the trips Hawaiian seas. And yes. this time, ang sa inyong presentation, nabanggit niyo po na ang common naman na species sa onion is the trips tabasi. Tama, ma'am? Ayan. So, nabanggit din po ni Ma'am Reyes kahapon na ang trips hawaiensis bilang flower trips ay maraming ina, uh, inaatake ng mga flowering plants. So, ang tanong, ma'am, is ito po bang trips tabasi or tabasay ay specific lang po ba sa mga alium species or it, or Ano rin po, inaatake rin po ba niya yung mga ibang flowering plants katulad ng trips hawaiensis? Yun po ma'am. Okay, thank you for that very good question, Sarah. Um, number one, uh, ikaklarify ko lang na isang species lang ang nakuha natin sa onion. 100%. Uh, trips tabasay lindiman, e, isa lang. Now, as the name connotes, no, trips tabasay, Di dapat alium ang dulo no kung sibuyas. Bakit taba ko? So galing una siyang na-discover sa tabako. Oo. So kapareho lang nung flower trips na yon ito naman hindi wala naman sila sa bulaklak, nandoon sila sa leaves no. Ay polypigus pa rin. Napakarami niyang host plants or alternate host plants. Hindi ko na nga sure ngayon eh kung onion ba talaga ang number one na host plant niya or garlic ba. Uh, that we will know tomorrow, di ba? Kung may mga kasama siya doon sa garlic or tabako ba kung saan siya na unang nakita, sa cotton ba, and many others. Napakarami, napakarami. Kung maraming host plants ang trips sa Wayenses, I think ko mas sobrang marami ang host plants din ng trips tabasay or tabaki tawag nila sa abroad tabaki and again invasive din siya bakit saan siya galing yung isa kahapon from hawaii di ba o na kasi na discover sa hawaii siya naman ay european or mediterranean oh na namasyal dito sa atin at napunta sa america o nagbabiyahe siya it's all over the world at nakita mo doon sa slide ni Dr. Amalin, yung lahat ng pula na yon may dots kanina, nandun siya. So it's cosmopolitan, it's all over the world. So, at ang pinakamasakit dyan, sa presentation ni Dr. Bahit, yung mga viruses na yon ang number one na na-confirm kasi ay yung trips na Basay. Worldwide. So ganun siya ka, ka anong tama ito? Serious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you ma'am for clarifications. Actually ako rin hindi ko rin alam yon yung mga history or parang background ng mga trips tabasa oh. and trips Hawaiian Seas. So kumaga parang mga foreigners pala to ma'am. No? Oh, foreigners <laughs> lahat to. Kala natin na <laughs> uh, East Egypt lang yung foreigner no. Kasi Egypt no. Yung, yung lamok, yung dingge mosquito. Kala natin yun lang. Ako itong mga trips natin. Puro invasive din. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Um, meron na po ba tayong questions from the audience? 
Do I see a hand? Do I see questions from our link? Ayan, so, sige, uh, habang iniisip nyo po muna yung, or pinaprocess nyo po yung mga information, or if you come up with a question, itype in nyo lang po sa comment section. So, for this second question, I'd like to ask Ma'am Lucille. Ma'am Lucille, are you there po? Hello, Ma'am Lucille. Yes, I'm here. Ma'am yeah. Sarah. Good morning, ma'am. So, yung uh, question po uh, has something to do with your presentation. So, um, kahapon po, perinesent nyo yung result ng bioassay ng uh, metarisium, uh, ay, wait lang, metarisium anisoply against trips hawaiensis. And nabanggit nyo po, ma'am, na ang lethal concentration nun is around 756,000. Yes. So, ang um, tanong po is, first question po is, um, same po bang metaratium anisoply ito na present, na present nyo today against strip tabasi, but the lethal concentration is lower, around 400,000. Tama po ba, ma'am? Okay. Yes, good morning. Uh, yes, it's the same species ng metarisium yung ginamit namin sa trips hawaiensis, which is infecting mango, and the uh, trips uh, tabasay infecting uh, onions. Same uh, metarisium species po. Since we isolated that from trips fra infecting uh, roses here in Benguet. Yes, it's the same. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, um... Uh, this question, ma'am, is a follow-up question for the general audience. So, ano po ang implication na magkaiba ang little concentration ng the same metarisium against two different species of trips? Uh, I guess it's on the uh, reaction of the, uh, the two different species, which is Hawaiiensis and Tabasay. Okay, so... Um, so, okay, so since... Uh, clarify po, kinonfirm ni Ma'am Lucille kanina na, na ito something to do, uh, kahit parehong uh, metarisium, magkaiba pa rin yung lethal concentration niya. Yes. So, gusto po natin i-clear sa ating mga manonood na kahit the same uh, active bioagent ang ginagamit or same metarisium ang ginagamit, ay um, meron pa rin uh, optimum concentration ng pesticide application. Tama, di ba ma'am? Parang parang yes. optimum uh, um, concentration ng pesticide application depende sa species ng trips na gusto natin i-control. Yes, so, exactly. Yan. So, I hope clear po yun sa mga clarify, ay, sa mga ano natin, manonood. I, I see Dr. Reyes raising her hand. Ma'am Reyes, meron pa kayong gustong idagdag? Uh, ang interpretation ko doon is uh, siguro yung results natin, ang ibig sabihin ay mas susceptible yung trips na basay. Oo. Kasi lower, di ba? Lower. Oo. Yung LC50 niya, lower. So, mas susceptible ang trips na basay. Mm -mm. Parehong effective, kasi konting-konti lang naman ang difference, di ba? Mm -hmm. Pero, mas susceptible siguro. Uh, sa size, mas maliit. Uh, mas maliit. Kung maliit na lahat ng trips, no mas maliit pa yung trips sa basay sa trips hawaiensis eh baka naman something to do with body size i don't know uh -uh. i'm guessing thank you sige ma'am thank you for the clarification ma'am so meron na po tayong question from the audience babasahin ko po from uh, sir efren dmc ayan with regards po sa unidentified bacterial disease onion i think this has something to do with the presentation of dr uh, pinyon Ano po ang preventive practices and treatment dito if there is any? Salamat po. Um, kasama um, po ba natin si Dr. Pinyon? Si Dr. Pinyon ay naka-only pa rin nasa Baguio ngayon conducting a farmer's training sa potato. Could we request uh, the indulgence again of our in-house, sino bang in-house natin dyan? Plant pathologist, uh, Dr. Dalisay o and Dr. Baid. Ulitin ko po yung questions. Para daw po dun sa unidentified na bacterial disease sa onion, ano po daw kaya yung mga preventive practices and treatment na pwedeng gamitin if there is any? 
Actually, Sarah, parang bacteria ang specialization mo eh. Maka pwede mo ring sagutin yan. Mycologist. Mycologist. May gusto po atin sabihin. Kasi yung advisor mo, si Ma'am Ma'am Tess. To the rescue, Ma'am Tess. Ay, si Dr. Bahit po. Nag... Ay, ma'am, sige po. Ma'am, sige, ma'am, test ko na. Tige, ano doon yan? Sir, bahit mo na. Nag-reach na. Sige, ma'am, test ko na. Okay, go ahead. The advisor. And the advisee. Okay, go. Okay, I'm not allowed to show my face. Bakit? Ewan ko. Nasa, nasa, kuha niya. Nasa administrator. Well, anyway, I think everybody can hear my voice. So, no problem. Pangit. Pangit ako eh. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, so uh, so bacterial disease, I've been, I've been ex exposed to that when I was doing the uh, seed testing sa onions when I was in uh, another country. Uh, ang usually kung pumapasok yan sa during irrigation. So if you use uh heavily contaminated uh, water like for example endobacteriaceae member of enterobacters yan ang common na bacteria bacterial genus or group na pumapasok sa halaman and then nag-express ng symptoms during storage of your union harvesting post harvest actually yan and in severe cases Kala nyo meron pang bald pero pinisil nyo wala ng laman. That's how serious enterobacteriaceae in bald crops. So yan ang problema ng onion farmers sa Yakima, uh, no, sa Yuma, Arizona. The largest onion producer in the whole continent of North America. Yan ang problema nila and then sabi namin, okay, what is your source of your water when you do uh, irrigation uh, before, before harvest time? Uh, anong control? Doon ka magsisimula sa patubig. Kasi yung yang enterobacteriasis, bacteriasis are their weak pathogens. Kung stress yung halaman mo, doon lang sila mag-express. Otherwise, they're there. Kaya yung bang uh, irrigation water nyo dyan ay madumi, tinataya ng tao or something. So yun, yun, yun muna ang tingnan ninyo kung paano. Otherwise, sabi ko noon, it's easy, easy so to identify uh, enterobacteriaceae. We, we, uh, uh, we know the primers. In three days, you know the, uh, if it's enter enterobacteriaceae or not. So uh, just like what uh, uh, other scientists have done, ang... Uh, isa sa mga common niya na nagko-complicate ng post-harvest sa onion, doon lang yung makikita. Hindi naman niya papatayin yung halaman niyo kaagad eh. Doon yung makikita sa bulb pag ni-store na, usually. And dyan yung uh, seed-transmitted bacteritis aclada. And I don't know if we are checking for those because it complicates, complicates the symptoms of bacteria and onion. And I don't know if we are, if we have classified botrytis aclada in onion as a quarantine pathogen. I don't know. The seed, onion seed industry in the U.S. are wary of that fungal pathogen. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Bahit, for that uh, information. So I have a nalinawan po, Sir Efren, yung sa inyong tanong. So, meron po tayong next question. Um, ito po. Paano po malalaman na may trip sa onion without any physical signs on the onion since this insect is not easily seen by the naked eye? Okay. Uh, I think that is it was to me. Pero marami naman na akong natuturuan na tumingin sa trips. Pwede ba natin i-invite si Kat? At ang galing niyang maghanap ng trips, inalagaan na nila yung trips sa Cagayan at pinaitlog pa. No? So pati itlog, kaya nilang hanapin. E kung yung buong individual eh, hindi nga makita sa field, eh bakit nakikita ni Kat? Kat, kwento mo nga. Nandiyan ka? Yes po, ma'am. O paano? Sagutin mo nga yung tanong. Ayan po. Open ka na. Uh, Open ka na video para makita ka nila. 
And po, good morning po. Uh, so, as per experience po, nung tinuruan din po ako ni Dr. Cecil na maghanap, magtingin ng clips sa onion and garlic. Kapag marami po kasi yung trips doon sa mismong halaman, pag malak mataas po yung infestation, ano po, makikita siya as parang brownish na sobrang liliit lang po kasi ng insekto pero parang brownish to parang dirty white yung ano yung kulay. And then kapag hindi naman po siya heavily infested, pag inopen po yung ano leaf sheets, dun po sila naka ano nakatago. Ganun rin po, makikita rin po na ano parang brownish or dirty white po yung ano kulay niya. Ayun po. Dadagdagan ko na ayat. Kat, thank you. Dadagdagan ko na lang siguro na usually kasi seldom na nag-iisa, 'di ba? Uh, seldom na nag-iisa siya kasi uh, partenogenetic or asexual virgin birth nanganganak yung babae kahit walang asawa, 'di ba? So no uno mating. Uh, so seldom na mag-isa niya. May isang babae lang diyan laging may kasamang anak 'yan. Oo. So, kumpul-kumpul sila kasi mayroon silang aggregation pheromone. Parang parang social insect. Uh, may tendency. Hindi naman sila social insect talaga like the bees na, and, and other insects. Hindi naman gano'n. Or aphids na napakarami. Ito, parang aphids nga. Kung alam niyo yung aphids. Parang aphids, yun nga lang, super liit ang, ang size. Oo. So, pero nakasiksik talaga. Nakatago eh. Nakatago. Nandun siya sa I-open mo ngayon yung sibuyas, gano'n. Tingnan mo. Pero ang isang technique, destructive sampling, kahit wala kang nakita, bumunot ka ng isa, kumuha ka ng puting papel, no? Tap mo lang na gano'n. Tap, tap mo lang gano'n. O, oh, gano'n. Sa mangga nga, eh, yung flowers niya, gagano'nin mo lang. Ito, gagano'n mo gano'n. Pag may gumagapang maliliit doon, ayun na yun, siya na yun. Pero destructive sampling nga lang yun. Kung iyo naman yung farm na yun, sa inyo naman yung farm na yun, edi you can sacrifice naman, di ba? Siguro some plants, uh, destructive sampling. Kunin, i-open, sirain, ganun, at ipagpag hmm, sa puting papel. Okay. So, thank you, ma'am and Miss Kat for sharing your technique you know, para ma-identify yung trips. Ma'am, para po dun sa mga hindi na ganun kalino yung mata, nakakatulong ba yung paggamit ng hand lens? yung ano tag na para ma-magnify somehow yung yung maliliit na trip definitely oo oh, oh. hindi yun ang hindi sinabi ni Kat I was waiting for her paano niya nakita yung itlog no o oh, ginamitan niya ng or oh, 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 no? unifier pero nakasagot dito niya medyo mahal lang yan okay. no 30 to 40,000 isa ayo oh, di mahal oh, pero yung hand lens na bibili lang yung few hundreds lang yun di ba Opo. Actually, uh, sa mga interested po, may mga hand lens naman po na mura lang. Actually, you can go to Lazada or Shopee. May mga murang hand lens. Enough to magnify po, di ba ma'am, yung mga kahit yung maliliit na. Mm, pero yung, yung, oh, yung trick lang talaga doon, destructive nga lang. Bunutin mo na at ganunin mo na. Oh. Tapos pag, pag mong ganun, lahat ng gumapang na maliliit doon, most likely, kasi 100% trips lang na nandyan eh. Mm. Okay. Unlike kasi yung harabas na talagang obvious na obvious na laki naman niya ng army worm, di ba? Kaya nga sa Nueva Ecija, wala, ara, halos, hindi ko lang masabi doon sa report ko na halos araw-araw sila nag-spray. Every other day naman daw. Pero sobra yun, ano? Uh, so, hindi kaya ng trips yun, syempre. Hmm. And so, I think we have uh, limited time na. So, for last question po siguro, um, Uh, this one has something to do with the management strategy of trips since diniscuss po ni Sir Boni kanina yung regarding sa integrated pest management si Dr. Amalin about bio-based bio pest management. Um, is it possible po ba na for our farmers to use just the pure biological control strategy, say meta resume, against trips or better yung alternate use of biocon and synthetic insecticide. Ano po ang masasabi ng ating mga experts? Anyone from the presenters po can speak. Hi, good morning. 
Yes, I, Dr. Bonnie? Yeah, I presented IPM. Ano? So, may choice tayo na hindi lamang yung bio ko ng magamit natin. Ano? Kasi kung talaga mataas ang infestation, okay, kung hindi naman makahabo ng ating mga natural enemies. But if the metarhesium will be good enough para magamit, they, you don't need to use uh, synthetic chemicals. Kung kailangan, talagang mataas, uh, parang na rin naman ang makakapita na ito. Ano? Kasi araw-araw na rin sila. Hindi na bang kaya ng kanilang pananin. Uh, Nadudun ang lahat ng available na kung pwede. Like abamectin, uh, yan ay uh, bio-based din naman ano, na uh, pinanggalingan. And then others, yung mga madali lang ang epekto na hindi na-apektuan yung mga uh, ano, baboy na maligaw doon. Meron mga gano'n ng mga pesticida na pwede nilang pagpilihan. Hindi yung robotsin. Okay, so uh, thank you Sir Bonnie for that uh, insights regarding sa management ng creeps. And um, Kung wala na pong hahabol ng questions, meron na pa po ba hahabol ng questions? Medyo limited na po yung time natin. Kung wala na po tayong questions, uh, may informally closing. Ah, yes, Miss Kat? Ma'am, sila Sir Jude Korea po sa MMS. Pero ah, yes, may question po sila. Okay. Sir Jude, uh, you can ask your questions po. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning, po. In behalf po ng sa cooperative namin, nandito po yung mga the double yung na mga growers, onion growers sa Occidental Mindoro. Ang naknalus po namin yung mga recommendations na binigay. However, some recommendation ay needs ng mahabang proseso. So wala bang tulad ng uh, mga bacterial and fungal diseases which we need some instrument to detect, right? So wala ba tayong wala ba tayong mas ma, mapaigsi natin yung length ng ma-discover natin para ang kailangan kasi ng mga onion growers yung mabilisang result para ma-puksa na. And yun po ang tanong ko. Uh, ay ano po ba yung marirecommend nyo sa amin na mga chemicals na pang-spray sapagkat nakita ko po dito yung site permit train ay bawal po sa atin yan. Hindi pa na allowed, very limited po yung ginagamit natin na pang-spread dahil eh, madali po itong ma-detect ma ng mga quality control dahil tayo ay supplier ng isang institutional buyer, so may fit po sila. So ang tanong po dito, ano pong maliban sa cypermetrain yung active ingredient na pinagbabawal po sa amin? Salamat po. Yeah, so... Thank you po sa tanong nyo. Meron po ba from the presenters who would like to answer yung tanong ni na, ni na Sir Jude? Parang dalawa yung tinatanong ni Sir Jude. Ano? Una, yung sa mga sakit. Pangalawa naman, yung sa mga insekto. So, sasagutin ko yung insekto. Marami po tayong pagtipilian. Tignan niyo po yung uh, pinaka-website ng... Uh, Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority, ano po. Palagi natin po yung update nila kung ano yung mga pwedeng magamit. Ngayon, pwede nyo rin pong i-check sa Europe Agriculture Fisheries Standard. Meron din po sila ng mga available ng mga biocon agents o so, mga botanicals, pagkakit ng pheromone, at uh, baka meron na rin silang nakaregistro ng microbials. Visitahin nyo lang po ang mga website nila. At doon yung makikita yung mga latest, ano po, kung anong magagamit nyo. Dahil alam po namin yung inyong concern, talagang kailangan walang makitang residue sa inyong mga sibuyas, lalo na yung mga institutional buyers nyo. Meron din po kami mga inaksis kasi sa mga baysiha, yung multipurpose uh, doon, na nagsusupply sa 
uh, Charity, McDonald's. So, nanghingi po sila ng assistance na through IPM. Kaya na nakakula sa pagmamanman, paggamit ng iba't ibang uri na optical, biochemical, o mechanical sa mga. So, yun lang po yung masasabi ko. Salamat po sa pag-attend ng Lord Bless Multipurpose Talk po, sa mga inyong literato at sa inyong mga mga. Yan. Thank you, Doc Bonnie. I hope nasagot po yung tanong ni na Sir Jude. Ayan, so hindi na po natin patatagalin kung wala na po tayong questions. Akin na pong uh, isasara ang ating open forum. At maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nag-participate. I am now giving back the spotlight to our MC, Mr. Mandy. Uh, maraming salamat, Ate Shara. Uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong aktibong pakikilahok sa ating Q&A portion. Muli, sa uspuso po kami nagpapasalamat sa ating mga speakers at participants. Sa mga nagnanais na makatanggap ng e-certificate para sa webinar ngayong araw, maaari lamang po nasagutan ninyo ang aming evaluation form. Ang link po ay makikita ninyo sa inyong mga screen uh, at sa chat box ng Zoom. Gayun din sa comment section ng aming YouTube channel, YouTube channel at Facebook page. So sana po ay sagutan ninyo ito upang mapagbuti pa namin ang pagsasagawa ng webinars. Maraming salamat po. At bilang pagtatapos, may ibabahagi pong mensahe sa atin ang aming butihing direktor na si Dr. Barbara L. Kawili. Hello, Ma'am Bambi. Hello, Mandy. Maraming salamat. Mandy. Hello po. Hello. So sa... Direktor no, ng DA Bureau of Agricultural Research, Dr. Junel B. Soriano. Uh, sa Assistant Director ng DA Bar, si Dr. Joel H. Lales. Sa President ng Cagayan State University, Dr. Urduha G. Alvarado. Sa project team na um, may kinalaman dito sa project on surveillance and detection of microbes. Utilizing molecular techniques and associated trips vector on onion, garlic, and mango in Luzon na pinangungunahan ni Dr. Junel B. Guzman to our organizers and participants. So magandang umaga sa inyong, sa inyong lahat. For the second day of this learning event, our crop protection experts have shared with us their research findings on the trips, species, and diseases that affect onions as well as presented several options on their management. Um, we also learned about the experiences of onion growers from different provinces in the country. And uh, they shared with us the pest problems in their onion farms and the management techniques that they employ. It is our hope that the presentations today were able to provide our onion farmers with new information that can be helpful to them. We hope that just as we find their produce very useful in our day-to-day -day lives, they can also find value in the findings of our research. We also hope that this event has inspired the conduct of more meaningful research on the various crop pests and diseases that affect different commodities so that we can further help our farmers achieve abundant yield and higher income. This web webinar will surely guide us to prioritize our efforts towards technology development and innovations for onion pests and disease management. Once again, I would like to thank those who have made this event possible, the Bureau of Agricultural Research for their funding support, the project team for their diligence in the conduct of this study, the organizers from Cagayan State University, headed by Dr. Cecil Reyes, and the National Crop Protection Center of CAPS, UPLB, for the coordination of this learning event. And last but not the least, siyempre yung attendees for joining us in these activities. So again, I invite you to join us tomorrow for the final installment of this learning activity. So maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Hiraya Manawari. Back to you, Mandy. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Bambi. Yun. Uh, 
Bago po tayo maghiwahiwalay, uh, meron lamang po kaming gustong i-anunsyo. Bukas, June 23, 2022, mula alas 9 ng umaga, ay aming idadaos ang ikatlo at huling bahagi ng webinar series na ito. So, tatalakayin po natin ang mga parehong paksa, ngunit ito ay patungkol naman sa pagsasaka ng bawang. Upang makapag-register sa event na ito, pumunta lamang po sa link na nakikita ninyo sa inyong screen or i-scan ng QR code sa bottom right corner ng inyong screen. So, ito po ay bukas at walang bayad para sa mga nice manood. Sana po ay makadalo at makilahok kayo sa webinar na ito. Finally, upang updated kayo sa activities ng NCTC, uh, maaari po kayong bumisita sa aming website, i-like at i-follow ang aming Facebook page at mag-subscribe sa aming YouTube channel. So muli, ako po si Norman D. Barbecho, katuwa ng aking mga kasama sa webinar series team at NCTC. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagdalo ngayong araw. Mabuhay po tayong lahat.